Hmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome to Wrath of the Rune Lord. This is Pathfinder, the adventure card games. We are playing the Godless Ones, and this is the last turn. We've got six goes to, to finish. So we're in seemingly a pretty bad situation here. Basically, we have eight cards to get through to find the villain. We know the villain is in this deck somewhere, all right? We have to be in a position to close uh, four locations. So we have one spare character, so we can dig multiple times. Now, the unfortunate thing is the only person who's in a position to win is Honora. Honora's in the, she's got the most gas in her hand. And she's also got two blessings, which means she can dig three times. Now, over here, we do have another three blessings here, but this is Kara. She has no way of actually defeating her, defeating the villain. Like, uh, she's just got uh, strength. At strength six, no weapons. So she's basically useless. So we have to ignore her because her, the turn order is that this girl goes first. And because we want her to find the villain and not Kara, we've got to pretend that those... Th those blessings are just for support. We do have one blessing here, which is before Anora, which means that we can dig an eight card deck five times. So there's only three cards in this deck we will not see, which is pretty good odds. So I'm fairly confident we will see Saloni this turn, either during uh, Shear's turn or during... Nora's turn. I'm more worried about finding that barrier with the evil trees or whatever than finding the villain this round. So it seems really unlikely, but we're actually in a pretty good position to win. Our odds are actually in our... I reckon the odds are in our favour of completing this. A one in five chance of finding the villain and a one in five chance of finding the, the barrier. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, there is one more annoying thing. Basically, the Sanctum, we can't close it. We have to banish a Corrupted Trait card to close it, which is really, really almost impossible, basically, because we don't have any Corrupted Trait cards that I know of. Definitely none are showing. And that means that there's a henchman in here as well. So normally when the henchman and the villain are in the same deck, it really increases your odds because you can kill the henchman, close the location, and it just discards every single card except the villain. And then you know exactly who has it and when to draw it. But we can't do that because we won't physically be able to close the location. The other real issue we have is over here, we have the watchtower. To close the watchtower, you have to banish a weapon. Now, the, the only weapon showing in the entire team is the sickle. I mean, we are very likely to draw a weapon with Crow and draw a weapon with Sheila, but the only 100% guarantee is Alan. So we have to send Alan to this location. Another problem is that Balazar is the best person to close the Citadel, and Kiara is the best person to close the market out of the people we have left. But again, we hopefully will be defeating the villain before Kiara takes her turn, which means that Balazar has to move to the marketplace, which isn't the best spot for him. And that's pretty much uh, where we're at. So there's a, there's a lot of issues still. It's going to be hard. I reckon it's actually... Well, I, I'm pretty confident we'll get the villain. I'm pretty confident about that i think actually the harder part of this uh, round is going to be closing the locations so let's get to it first thing we move alan to the uh watchtower advance that blessing deck and we'll just draw a card stalking armor constitution four his constitution is a d8 so we might get a another nice shiny new armor Hmm, coffee is so lovely. Oh, a one. That's not very good. Okay, and that's the end of that. We draw three cards. One, two, three. Give us blessings. 
Okay, we get one blessing. And that's that. Now, Crow. Crow has to move to where Sheila is. So he can close that location. And he gets to draw a card. It's the Researcher. So that's a Charisma 6 Intelligent. He actually has a pretty decent Charisma. Charisma 8. Let's see if we can get better than a 1 this time. Come on, better than a 1. Oh, come on. 8! <laughs> okay, this is actually really good news for us because we can now discard that Researcher to explore the location again. And... That's a constitution three, so that's a D6 plus two. So that's an automatic win. So now that there's no location, no, nothing at this location, we can actually attempt to close it, which is really good news because it means that we'll basically get two attempts to close this location. So uh, we, we get the helm in our hand. So we need to grab the first weapon. Oh, this is a hard one. Merely strength nine. So we've got a D12 plus one. So basically we need to roll an eight with a D12. That's actually pretty hard. We might not do this. Come on. Like I said, we've got two chances. So it's not too much of a seven. So that's a fail. Okay, we're going to discard that and draw up to five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, oh, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's our whole hand. Okay, so you only die if you attempt to draw and there's no card. So we're still alive. And that's that. So we actually have a second chance to close that location. So not too bad. Okay, so she's going to move over here. And we're going to start digging. Yoink! Oh, what's this? Improvised dinosaur. Strength survival 18. For your combat strength, bury this card to do a 1d20. You may additionally expend mythic charges to get extra d20s. Wow. That's basically an insta win. <laughs> Maybe I should tank the whole game and just get this spell. By, <laughs> by spending all my blessings on it. Nah, we're okay. So that's just an instant fail. We can't get that. Okay, let's do a blessing. Yoink. Skitter. That is a wisdom seven. We actually have divine wisdom, which is a D8 plus one. You blame all. Uh, that's a fail. And that's all we can do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to discard both of these and draw to four. One, two, three, four. And hopefully we'll get some blessings. Excellent. Oh, that is an excellent hand. Uh, wooden shield, longsword, and two blessings. That's a good start hand. Okay. So we only have six cards to go. Okay. Balthazar has to move to the marketplace. No choices here. Now the marketplace is interesting because the marketplace has no barriers. It has no monsters. Every single card is a boon. So we'll just dig as deep as we can without spending blessings because there's no fear here. Starting with the Demon Hunter's Handbook, which is an Intelligence Knowledge 9. We actually have Knowledge, which is a D8 plus 2. So we need a seven. Woo, fail. We have the carbuncle, recharge this card to explore your location. Yoink. Uh, okay, so that's a dexterity range seven. We have a dexterity of six, so we can't get that. And frilled lizard. Yoink. Uh, Caravan Guard, Diplomacy 8. We actually have a Diplomacy 
don't we? No, we don't have diplomacy, but we do have a charisma. We need... Okay, so we rolled an 8, but unfortunately that does not count, because if we look at the location, when you attempt to acquire a boon, add 1 plus a scenario's deck number. So basically it's a 9 to, to, to uh, get that character. So that's the end of that. We will also discard the beast skin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oop, uh, we have six, not seven. Okay, so we get two blessings. And now it is the time of judgment. Okay, it's the first card, boom. Oh, it's the cultist. Okay, so let's, uh, hang on. Why have I been spawning a, cult, a, a servitor every time I fight a cultist? Okay, if it's the first turn, you automatically take a damage. Let's put out that. If undefeated, shuffle the top. It doesn't say anything about the servitor. What is going on? Why was I drawing a servitor? I feel like I've forgotten something. Blackfire and... Adept. Oh, I bet you that was on the Blackfire Adept, and then I did it for every single guy. Before you're at the character location, summons and encounters the Servitor Demon. Right, so basically every time I fought a cultist, I summoned the demon when I didn't need to. God, I made this hard for myself, didn't I? Okay, let's go. Uh, Electricity and poison traits he's immune to. So we'll do a Viper Strike. It's a D12 plus two D4s plus one. Okay, and we, we, we're just going to really push every roll because you don't want to fail every anything. So let's go roll with two D12s. Booyah, that is a win. So now we get the chance to close the location, but we're not going to. We did do Viper Strike, so we have in our hand one, two, three, four die. So let's roll one die, one d4. Yeah, blamo. That's a one, so the first one is recharged. And that is basically, after you play a spell, you may recharge a random spell from the discard pile. Now, I don't know if I'm supposed to shuffle the discard pile after I uh, pull something out. And now we want to basically recharge this. And the reason we've got to be careful with our recharges is that we don't want to, dis we don't want to uh, die by drawing our hand at the end of the turn. I'm not quite sure whether the game ends immediately or whether we still have the draw phase at the end. But I'm just going to try and keep these guys alive. So that is a D12 plus one. To uh, we need a what? We need a six. Ten. Okay, so that's two recharges. Yoink. Okay, we'll play another blessing. Yoink! Oh no, this isn't looking good. So this is an Intelligence Arcane 4, but we can use our Knowledge Skill for this. So that is a D12 plus 3. So we should definitely get this. Okay, here you have ammo. And final card. 1 in 4 chance. Ooh dear. Oh dear. Oh wait, I haven't been advancing the blessing deck. Anymore, Ladies so. and gentlemen, this is so, the, the main deck. event the of the evening. We're just drawing out, drawing out the suspense. It's Let's do it. Time. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so with three cards to go, we finally get up. So, that's awesome. Right, uh, what do we have to do? 
summon and kill a monster. Yeah, monster. Oh wait, before we do this, let's uh, close the locations. So we have this guy, he just needs to, to banish a weapon. And that closes this location. This guy needs to summon and acquire a weapon. Are you kidding me? Strength Survival 18. That is unbelievable. F12. Oh my gosh. This is bollocks. Oh man. So we have to spend one, two. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five left. I'm going to spend three blessings on this. One, one, two, three. I mean. God, that's so terrible. Thirty. Well, we get the improvised dinosaur, and that one is closed. She doesn't close one. Balasar needs to grab a character, so we'll get. Uh, what should we take? So he's got knowledge and charisma. So. Basically, I think we're going to get a ally because they're usually charisma and that's his best stat. Boom. What you got for us? Charisma is a D6. So that is a D10 plus two. We'll spend a blessing, get an extra D10 and taking no chances. And that's a 17, so that's a pass. And uh, that's closed. And now we have this issue here. Oh, God, I forgot all about this. This is a nine combat to destroy, and we've only got a D6. So we're going to spend three... And what does that leave us? That leaves us with one blessing. Oh, I should have only done... Th I, it was like a 70% chance to only roll three of these dice. I should have only rolled three. If I roll three, I bet you I get it. Twenty-two. So I'm one blessing short. Oh, we've got one blessing here as well. And I'd have to do two combats still. Okay. I have to roll three though. I have to roll four dice for this roll. I could probably get away with three, but I just don't want to risk it. Come on. That's a pass. And now we have this guy. Wisdom Divine 8 or a Combat 12. Oh. Okay, so that is Lightning Touch. He's immune to mental and poison. This is Electricity. If the check to defeat does not have the magic trait, he's undefeated. This does have the magic trait. So we have a D12 plus 2 plus one. Oh. oh no. I'm gonna have to spend this as well. Here's another D12. Oh, 17 just made it. So he's dead. We also get to recharge a card. What have we got now? One, two, 
three, so we roll a d6. One, yeah, oh, it's a uh, strike. And we need an arcane six to pass. For the recharge. Okay. And now the final roll. We're going to do an arcane nine, which is a d12 plus one. We have a raw roll. There's nothing we can do. I've been a bit overzealous with my thing, so it's all down to this. Let me work out the odds. 12, and we need a 7 to defeat. Basically, we're looking at about a 60% chance. The odds are in our favor. I can't, I can't even look. Come on. Come on. Oh, no. Come on. 11. Bam. 12. We only need nine. Bam. That is gone. She is destroyed. And that's it. So, yeah, we won. Unbelievable. I would be making a lot more noise, but uh, it's early in the morning. I don't want to wake everyone up. <laughs> but that was epic. And <laughs> we got the dinosaur car. For those of you that were wondering, every time you discard, every time that you discard in this uh, mod, right? If I come over here, you know, it comes over here, it shuffles the decks. You see, so that even though we saw the dinosaur card and then it got chucked back into the deck, we actually definitely had the deck shuffled because it automatically shuffles it. So that was uh, just some kind of huge fluke. And now we've got this in our hand. <laughs> Who do we have with survival? Husk. Oh, wait, we don't have Husk, do we? I really want to put Husk back in the party. Okay, so that is the end of that. We have beaten the godless ones. We've tracked it down. There's a couple of accounting videos to do next. Next video, I'm going to do my deck building. And the video after that will be the epilogue and the intro to the next quest. But there will be a break in the in the videos because I'm going to finish version two of the mod with the new modifications. Basically, I'm redoing the dice roller and I'm changing the way the these things work as well. And I'm going to put I'm putting a little series of buttons down the side. To enable me to draw from the uh, the decks over here without having to uh, you know move the camera and I'm considering I haven't decided yet but I'm considering making a button uh, to actually draw like it'll find out wherever you're standing and then draw from here the only reason I didn't do that last time is because there's all these different ways that you know you can have cards face up and stuff so it's, it's, it is a little bit more of a pain to set up than you might think. But yep, that's that. That is the end of that. And I will see you guys next time.